Hey everyone, this is Chaplain Anthony Kelly, and today I want to talk to you about Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to talk about Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. But in a moment, I'm going to read to you that passage. But first, I want to show you a hand, a card hand. And we have the nine of spades, the six of diamonds, and also the king of hearts. Which is the most valuable card here in this deck? It is in this hand, the what? King of hearts. So we're going to take that middle card, the king of hearts, and I am going to take it and lay it to the side for just a moment. Now, the remaining cards, the six of diamonds and the nine of spades, we're going to go ahead and put to the side as well. Now I'm going to take these two cards and put them to the side as well. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that Jesus loves us. It, first of all, it's about John the Baptist. John is the last of the apostles to pass away. He is exiled in the island of Patmos for preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And while he is on the island of Patmos, a work island, a prison island, he is probably taking a respite from work. And, and then he sees this revelation, this giant revelation of Jesus Christ. First of all, it is a passage like any other passage opening up the first couple of verses. You know, verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show him, his servants, what soon must take place. It's a, he's telling us, he's setting us up, that this is a book that's going to talk about the end times. He made it known by sending his angel to servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it. And take to heart what is written, because the time is near. Now, verse 4, John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to, from whom who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler over all the kings of the earth. No, wait right there. Do you see that how it opened up in the first couple of verses, just like any other epistle, it's given an introduction, and but then it turns from introduction to that of doxology. He's talking about not just any other revelation. He's not just talking about any other thing that's going on in his life. No, he is talking about a revelation that he saw. It was revealed to him about Jesus Christ. And it turns from that of any other normal letter greeting to that of doxology. It is not John now writing it. After verse 4, it is Jesus Christ. It is God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. John, to the seven churches of the province of Asia, grace and peace from who? From whom who is, who was, who, who is, and who was, and who is to come, and the seven spirits before the throne. This is a picture of heaven. The seven spirits before the throne is talking about the throne of God. So John is getting a picture here and is seeing a revelation of heaven. He sees God the Father, he sees the spirits before the throne, and he sees Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over all the kings of the earth, that God the Father has instilled in him all authority. Isn't that what Jesus said? That all authority is given to me under heaven and earth? That Jesus has all authority of God the Father. And that all the fullness of God dwells in Jesus Christ. So Jesus is that firstborn. From the, among the dead. He is the one who resurrected from the dead from God the Father, and he is alive at the Father's hand right now in the flesh and blood. Jesus is alive. Jesus is not dead. He's not in a borrowed tomb from Joseph of Arimathea anymore. Why was it borrowed? Because he wouldn't be in there any longer. The Jesus is alive. And then he says, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, has made us to be kingdom and priests to serve his God, Yahweh God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Now here you have a difference in manuscripts. 
the King James, if you will read it, says, to him who loved us. The King James, at the time of its writing translation, had only a certain set of manuscripts to use from. Since then, we have discovered older manuscripts that are closer to the authentic writings of the apostles. Therefore, we found in a more truer sense the proper translation, which is not past tense, that Jesus loved us on the cross, and yes, he does and did, but he loves us today. It's ongoing. It's present tense. Therefore, Jesus did not just love us in one point in time of history, but he loves us beyond that point in time of history. He loves us today. It's a continual present tense action word, meaning Jesus loves me and you right here and right now. He loves us despite of what you've done, despite of who you are, despite of all the sin that you've committed. He loves us and not only loves you, but set you free from your sins by his blood. Your sin, my sin, the sin that we've done, the horrible things that we thought and said and done, and it's all washed away. It's all gone. Jesus has set us free from our sins by his blood. If we come to Jesus by hearing the gospel, faith comes by hearing, and then we place our trust in him, and you start to believe in who Jesus is. And then you come to acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of salvation and you repent of your sins to Jesus, the Father God. And then you confess before all people that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, it says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. And then you are water baptized. The Lord comes, Jesus lives inside of your heart through the Holy Spirit. Your sins are washed away. You are brand new, whole, you are clean. Jesus has set you free from our sins by his blood. The blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary during the Jewish Passover sets you free. Jesus is that Passover lamb, the holiday, the feast day that the Jews commemorate the exile from Exodus and leaving Exodus, their Exodus bondage and captivity. Jesus turns that day into a celebration of his death because that is when Jesus died. He became the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The same time the high priest was sacrificing the lamb in the temple for the sins of the people, Jesus, the ultimate lamb of God, was being sacrificed on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Jesus shed his blood to set us free. Therefore, we don't have to sacrifice a lamb anymore. We don't have to worship at a temple anymore. We have Jesus Christ. Jesus is our lamb. Once and for all that blood was shed forever. He sets us free, continual, ongoing, from our sins by his blood. That he knew who knew no sin became sin for us on the cross that we can become the righteousness of God. That Jesus looked at the cross and he gladly, for joy, went to the cross, scorning its shame to sit down the right hand of the throne of God. Look to him who endured all, soul, all such opposition that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus Christ is that lamb. He, the one who shed his blood for you and for me. He gave himself freely for us. When, so when you come to him for salvation, it is done. It is finished. Your sins are washed away. For example, when you come out by the baptismal waters, you are saved. Saved not by the works or anything you have done, but what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary. Your sins are washed away. It is by your faith. It is by your repentant heart. It is by your confession. It is by your baptism. All those steps lead us to Jesus Christ. That Jesus saves us from our sins by his blood. So today, I stand here, not as Anthony Kelly, but as a Christian. I had Jesus Christ living inside of me. It's I who no longer lives, but Jesus lives inside of me. So therefore, I'm gladly called a Christian because I want to live for Jesus for all the days of my life. Jesus truly is our King. He is that King we look to today. So, these two cards. 
They're indicative of our life. We need Jesus in it, don't we? We need Jesus in our life to show us who he truly is. Jesus is the King of Hearts. So today, I encourage each and every one of you to look to Jesus Christ, the true King of Hearts, because it's Jesus and by Jesus' blood that saves us from our sins. It is Jesus that we need to look to today. It is Jesus. Look to him and be saved. It is my prayer that this video has encouraged you today. And I pray that God will touch you in a powerful way. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you touch each and every person watching this video. May they be touched by you for salvation. May they be touched by you for cleansing and for healing that all their sins, all the stuff that they've done, all the horrible stuff that deserves death through your blood and your sacrifice is washed away. That we can be cleansed from our sins by your blood. So I pray that all who are watching this video come to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. It is my prayer that you will be blessed and encouraged by all that's said and done. It is my also prayer that you will press like and also subscribe to get more videos like these. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.